Welcome to The Truth in This Art. I am your host, Rob Lee. And today, I am pleased to welcome my next guest, an educator and mixed media artist, as well as owner of the Black Genius Art Show and Genius Guy Studios. And from Baltimore, Maryland, please welcome Brian Robinson. Welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm present. <laughs> present in the counting for an accountant. For. Right. I should probably cut my camera off. This is just so distracting watching myself talk. That's cool. <laughs> it's a thing. I, you know what? You know what? I'll do the same thing. I'll invite both of us to do it because I'm going to be making faces the entire time as well. Yeah, so, bro. Boom. Done. Crisp. I'm done. All right, I got it too. There we go. Boom. <laughs> See, it's, it's funny. I remember when I added this dynamic of having the visual there because it was mm -hmm. one. Um, one guest was like, I can't tell what your face is doing, so let's just put on video. And now right. it's gone full circle of like, yo, we're just going to make faces at each other for the next hour or whatever. So let's... Pretty much. <laughs> so before we, we dive into the topic at hand, like, you know, creative stuff, your work and all of that good stuff, I want to learn more about like some of your early background, your early experiences, because I, I believe some of those sort of like early things that we encounter um pop back up in our work as we become adults so if you could you know share a bit about your story and uh, maybe some of the creative things you were into growing up that show up in your work today yeah so you want to know what was the question again Rob? <laughs> <laughs> tell me about um some of your um what's your story ultimately and some of the creative okay. things you were into growing up okay great great so you're looking at um the youngest <laughs> of four so you're looking at the, the baby of the family who had to be creative you know i had to find things that occupy my time i had these two older parents you know so i had to be creative i had to think outside the box and i had to entertain myself when my older siblings were either off with their families and doing that um i'm grown thing you know so i had to really be that that child in, that was trying to create so i was playing with legos and sketching little doodles and practicing inside of my signature and that was me as a child, always creative, always trying to think outside the box. Even when it came to games that we played in the neighborhood, like a, a basic game of tag to me was let's play tag without touching the ground. This is the whole, before the whole the floor is live and things. So we would be in the back alley, East Baltimore, climbing up fences and playing tag without touching the ground. Yeah, it was very exciting. Um, so I was just stuck. I was very creative, always trying to like create games that didn't exist and and see who would go along with it. And um, as I grew older, um, I started to really be able to, I was like a documentarian for my family. So my, I mean, my mother, she got me a video camera. And from that, that time on, I was that person that had the camera documenting the cookouts and the family events, the birthday parties. And this was before editing was a thing on computers. So I was just taking these cameras and basically storing footage that nine times out of 10, nobody saw, <laughs> you know, because I wasn't able to give that fast output. So I was creating with the camera. Mm -hmm. So my early years as an artist um, was basically playing with the camera and trying to create these these stories that my family um, was living was living out. And wow. from that point on, I knew it was something about this camera thing, something about this storytelling, something about piecing together these puzzles from the Lego toys to the cameras. I was always trying to piece together these puzzles. And later on in life, um, I was trying to find my voice as an artist. Mm -hmm. And I found my voice as an artist through underground hip hop, underground poetry spots. And that's how I said, you know what? I think this is um, how I'm going to express myself. And that was through um, an outlet of documenting these artists that I felt like were bigger than life and trying to express myself through words and, uh, and visuals. So that, that young child who liked to draw and create, I now had a different platform to tell these stories. And I said, maybe this music and this poetry thing is another way to create a narrative, to be a creative. So that was early 18, uh, 19 year old Brian trying to find his voice as an artist. No, yeah. thank you. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. And, you know, yeah. there's a few if you did for to do that sort of word cloud or do that sort of uh, what is it? The Venn diagram saying, all right, mm -hmm. got some of the like Legos for me, East Baltimore for me, yeah. you know, being the documentary. And hey, Rob, you're going to be our um, our cameraman at our wedding. And I was like, where? I'm 13. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. doing all of these these different things, but being the. I'm the, I have a younger brother. I have two older siblings, but I live with my younger brother. And mm -hmm. so I was the older brother. So doing all of that, but also being the person that's the experimenting person and the sort of creative person. So definitely I relate. So 
if you could tell us a bit about like you touched on like film and documenting from that standpoint, talk about some of the, the, the other stuff that goes into like what you're doing now with, you know, black genius art show. And, you know, like I see education in here. I see business mm -hmm. marketing, maybe animation. So talk about, about that yeah. creating art and combining it with like education. Cause I see that as well. Well, so absolutely. So like, I told you that. So you're looking at that 19 year old. So 19 year old, <laughs> I graduated from high school and I needed a job. I needed some place to say I'm I'm being an adult now. So I think I got into the school system very early in life. So my sister got me a job. Um, she pulled some strings, got me to the school system. So they, at the age of 19, I was working in the school system and I looked like a student for the most part. But I was just I was just trying to find a way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was in the school system and actually. At the same time I was in there, I was I was trying to experiment with animation. And a right. friend of mine, who is like a mentor to me, he at that time he had an animation school. So now you had this 19 year old who was working in the school system, is trying to explore. This is post high, high school, trying yeah. to explore the field of animation and and with this filmmaking bug in him, very naive, just trying to create and tell these stories. So I was in the school system working there. I would leave there and go to the animation school and I was balancing all this and then community college. So I was balancing all these different elements of, 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 of adulthood in a sense. And I was taking film and animation. And at that point I didn't know how to mix them together. So while I was actually in animation school, it was a flyer that came across about a competition, a short film competition. So I'm taking these 2d characters that I've been doing since middle and high school I was taking these characters and trying to animate these in the animation school. And while I was there, I got introduced to this, oh, it's a competition for film. So now you're taking this young animator who's trying to animate cartoons. That's what I want to do. I like characters and building these, these funny figures. And now I'm like, oh, maybe I should try some with the camera. So now I'm entering these film competitions and um, being introduced to different crowds. And, and I was in the circle of filmmakers, like uh, mm -hmm. film majors. So these yeah. kids are in Micah and Towson, um, all, all the local film schools um, that were doing things. I was in these forums with them uh, sharing my work. And by that, I mean unscripted, me with a camera playing around. <laughs> Consider myself pretty funny. And I was trying to create these narratives in these rooms for the people. And a lot of times they weren't my peers, you know. So it was just this, this inner city black kid in these rooms with, with other people. So it was in these rooms um, – that I, I was trying to express myself through through media on the camera and showing myself on camera and trying to tell these stories. And, and like I said, in front of an audience of people who didn't look like me. And uh, it was those circles that I said, oh, I, I, I have a voice, you know, I can really, you know, show people who are not familiar with what I do. I can show them some things that I do. Yeah. So it was there that I started to really experiment with the, uh, the media aspect and introduce myself as this creator. And at that point, I started to develop this, this, company called grasshopper films <laughs> and that's what i tagged myself as is grasshopper the filmmaker and i was making short films music videos and in in the presence of film majors so you got this guy with a, a, a handy cam that didn't know too much about film but knew how to tell stories about baltimore and what, and what he liked to do and i was being mixed in these circles in the in these film salons uh trying to share these stories and i think that's when i, I realized oh i can really tell stories with a pencil and i can tell them with a camera so I was starting to experiment with these different paintbrushes that, that can tell these stories. And that's how I got into film. At the same time, I was in animation school trying to take these basic drawings into a, a more fluid um, style of art. And this was this was like, yeah, I told you, like 19 to 21. Very young Brian. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's great. I mean, being able to you know, kind of grow and get that sort of early um, entry point into mm -hmm. a space. And I, and I think, or I guess I'll ask instead of assuming. So mm -hmm. in terms of sort of the educational side, like, and it, it has that become part of the mission with your work in terms of like Black Genius Art Show and any of the projects you've done, you know, in the last, like, let's say this sort of current body of work or this current um, work that you're doing, yeah. is that now baked into it? Yeah, absolutely. So it's like, it's Voltron, man. It's like, if I was to look back from a little kid to the grown man now, it's like, it's Voltron. Like, all these pieces work together. And they didn't all happen in order, you know? It's like, 
I explored this, the filmmaker aspect of my life early and I had some, you know, I've done projects and things like that. And what happened is I always was drawing and creating these, these images, but I really wasn't sharing it on big platforms. Like you even knew it or you didn't know it. And what happened is as the years went on, on and technology began to to advance i wasn't advancing i was then i started to compare myself and when i did that with with, with, with the background in education and the background in film and background in and and just drawing and animation i still wasn't up to date with what was moving like the youtube and the it went from dial up to ethernet cords and like oh my god they're uploading stuff on the internet fast and i wasn't caught up then people start getting cameras that did more stuff than my camera did DSLRs and HD cameras. And it's like, I couldn't keep up. Everyone was moving information so fast. And when that happened, I stopped creating. Hmm. And when I stopped creating, it was because I was comparing myself and I felt like I'm not going to be saying I'm a filmmaker when they got a camera, they're doing the same thing. (laughs) Everyone had access to stuff that I had, but they were moving faster. And And once I start comparing myself, I start falling back into the, let me just stick with the education field as an educator mm-hmm. and just, you know, pay my bills and keep it moving. So I stopped creating art, man. I just stopped creating art. So, and yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It, and, and I've, I've run into that as well. And mm-hmm. you, you get these periods where you kind of go down or you're not getting what you think you could get, or you're not taking it to sort of that next level or whatever yeah. the thing might be. And a lot of that comes from that sort of comparison. Um, mm-hmm. It's like comparison kills creativity. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, you're you're doing something that's very interesting like interesting like i've been trying to get this interview for a while it is mm-hmm. it's really funny because i've been you know watching and seeing yeah. some of the really cool things that have come out of it so in that how did how did black genius art show come about so it came out uh it, black the black genius art show it was birthed through um i guess me understanding that i I didn't have to compare myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have to conform to what others were doing to express myself. So from not creating, um, something hit me and said, you know what, let me stay in my lane. Let let me just do what I like to do. And I went back to drawing these, these characters that I was doing like in middle and high school. I I called them boneheads at the time. And these were the things that kept me through high school. It kept, it kept me grounded when i had those jobs at the high school when i was in college doing things like these are the characters i would go to as a quick doodle you know something to waste of time and i picked those back up yeah and i start sharing these images on social media and now you have the people who are following me and friends and things like that they would say oh i thought you was just um you know doing that film i didn't know you could draw I'm like yeah yeah I've, I've been drawing like that's my <laughs> thing yeah, I, like, I like drawing so when i share these pictures they began to give me these narratives and these like stories that I, I saw on my post and I was like, Oh yeah, that's cool. I can do it again. Cause these were I could do these so fast. So when I was getting that feedback from uh, the social media, i said, you know what? Let, let me, let me try something different with this medium. So you're looking at the, the guy who just wanted to animate characters. Now I'm picking up a canvas and said, let me try to paint. <laughs> let me try to paint something. Yeah. And that something was me using these characters as my, as my go-to so the content that i wanted to paint i found the safest method was these characters that i can do so easy that i call boneheads so i took that and i said i I need a better name i need i need something better and and stronger so i went with uh who i was inspired by and that was these creatives that i I consider geniuses uh, from the music like of marvin Gaze and uh, the art of emory douglas who created you know the black panther logo and the Keith Haring's that use simplicity. You know, you take these creators uh, and what they did so naturally that came off so natural and fluid. And even the local people that I said when I hit the the poetry spots that were in Baltimore and these hip hop underground hip hop spots, these people I saw bigger than life because they were expressing themselves as artists and as creatives. So you mix those local people with the international people, and it's like these icons that. I consider geniuses. I said, let me put this into my brand, the Black Genius Art yeah. Show. So the black piece came from, oh yeah, I'm African American, get that. But I researched <laughs> what I researched what, what black was and what it meant and how many meanings it had, how black can be used to create so many other things in in a in a color aspect. Yeah. So I researched this guy, I knew these conversations would come up. I said, I'm using the black genius art show. And in all my pieces, I use black as this bold line that makes my characters pop out. 
and it separates them from this really simple background. But it gives that image uh, all all the attention from the big eyes that kind of draw people into these expressions that were like, uh, and some would say sad, but they were like more so a default look where you really couldn't tell where that person's head was. And sometimes as as people, we don't always smile. We don't always frown. But it's that in-between piece where you can't tell how their day went or where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. So I found that in a lot of my characters that was creating these conversations where you're trying to experience what exactly is this character experiencing. And that was that was my narrative. And that's what I was using as as that black element in making the characters pop. And I mixed it all together. And the show was the fact that end of the day, I just wanted the animation show. <laughs> I just wanted, <laughs> I just wanted the art to tell stories and, and, and make people feel a different kind of way. So I put it all together as the black genius art show canceled out boneheads. And I <laughs> ran with that as my brand, the black genius art show. I and that's it. how I was born. And what it did Rob is Rob, it, it, it um, it gave my, it gave my, my characters, um, it gave, it gave it a different life. It gave my art a different life. It gave me a regiment to create every day. And that was my motto, to create every day. Because yeah. when I wasn't creating every day, I found myself not creating at all, you know? And so the painting helped me to create like a, it was an exercise. Every day if I went to sleep, if I was editing or writing a script or, or sketching an image, I had to do this. And then it almost came naturally. You know what I'm saying? That was like my, that was my Bible verse, create every day, create every day. And that's what I started yeah. doing. And that was through the painting. And that was through this, redefining myself uh and that was through the black jeans art show uh, it's a mix of education i wear my art around my students i wear it on my back i'm creating with it so it kind of walks on its own like a child and it and it, and it talks to people and it, and it creates yeah a life okay. of its own so one i i, I, yeah. I must say like it gives me and this person's redacted so i won't name him but i will yeah. name what he did um yeah. It, it gives me the what the next logical step is to this sort of like Fat Albert series in terms yeah. of that, that. That's the vibe I get in the most complimentary sort of way. And I'm mm-hmm. waiting for you to create like a podcaster that might have a beard <laughs> and glasses, you know, Big oh, Daddy yeah? Pod or something. That'd be great. <laughs> uh, no, but I, I, I really dig it. And I think that, you know, similar sort of, you know, on, on the surface, these are the bullet points as I was touching on earlier. And, you know, we have a, like a lot of different interests that we have. Like I had the period where I was drawing and then mm-hmm. I went into uh, poetry writing. I may have had yeah. a treatment or a script here and there. Mm-hmm. And I've been a podcaster for 14 years, you know, and mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of one of those things. And, you know, some people have the, the vision and the foresight to say, Oh no, you're a polymath. You're, you're, you're doing multiple things and, yeah. and and other people might tell you and get in your ear when you hear that sort of um, comparison thing of you need to pick a lane and stick to it. Oh, I and hate it's that. Like, it's like, which one is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's yeah. like, I'd rather be able to do all of the things that I want and just be a creator, be able to take whatever the thing is as far as it could possibly go. And I think that's what I see coming from you and what you're doing. Yeah. And, so, so speak on some of the like kind of the, the wins over the last like few years. You know, I, you have a brick and mortar. You know that I, yeah. I see that's in the very very interesting area these days. That's getting a lot of attention, a lot of foot traffic potentially in the, in the future as we come further and further out of the pandemic. So, so speak to us a bit about you know the 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 brick and mortar and some of the mm-hmm. new things that are coming along. Absolutely. Um, woo. Sometimes you forget. I won't say I even forget. It's like you get so. I like intertwine, like I'm inside of, of what I create, you know what I'm saying? To the point where it's, it feels natural. It's like breathing, you know what I'm saying? So when I create, even when you have the snags and you have the setbacks and things like that, it's part of the process. So it's almost like um, seeing my art move from a community aspect where in order for me to introduce my art, I had to go outside, I had to set up a tent, I had to set up a six foot table. And I've seen my inventory grow from a, from 50 pieces all inside of a suitcase. I've seen myself go from a suitcase to a brick and mortar um, building. And it's so weird because even to this day, somebody will walk into the gallery space and and it's almost like, I don't even know how to say I'm the owner of the gallery. I don't know how to say, yeah, this is my gallery because it just feels <laughs> as simple as the first canvas I painted on in, in, a, in a bay window in an apartment. Mm-hmm. It feels just as natural as that. It feels as natural as me just getting down this painting a cartoon character. But instead of the canvas being 
that <laughs> the canvas is a building. It, it, the canvas is a brick and mortar. So I look at it just like that. And that's what makes it so natural that yeah. opposed to me going out and setting up the table, if people come to me and I still like to go and set up and pop up places, I do it. I love it because I yeah. love that, that, that conversation with the community because it helps, it inspires me. And to have people come to the gallery space and say, oh, this, this space feels different. That's yeah. the win. This space feels, um, something about this, this, this is, you know, people have come in and they feel a different kind of way. So it's like to see your art and what you built, you know, shift the atmosphere whether you're into art or you just want to be around something different. Like I've heard from young to old, people have came in and they've expressed themselves. It's, it's not about the money exchange, more so about this feeling they get, this experience, what I call it, that they get when they walk into, um, I guess, the brick and mortar. And, and that's been a transition uh, from what 2014 when I started to 2020. So 2020 is when I went into the brick and mortar, right? When COVID was like, no, 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 close all the businesses. <laughs> it was then that I, I I managed to have a friend who I met when I was 19, who yeah. I met when I was trying to find my voice, uh, John of Cashland, clothing retailer. So, yeah. so he had a warehouse. I went to the warehouse in 2020, bringing in that same mentality of a six foot table, a tent, and, I, and where I was set up in a park or anybody's church. It didn't matter. I was trying to share my art. He yeah. said, I got a warehouse. He brought me in the warehouse with him. I set up my gallery on the back of a church program. I mapped this out. Uh, this, this is this is writing the vision down and, and then making it clear and seeing it come to life. I wrote this down on the back of a church program, the map, how I wanted this spot to be inside of a, a shared space. And I sketched it out, and I built it the same way I sketched it out. And this is during COVID. This is when people couldn't come in the building. So me thinking, oh, I, I, I'm good now. I got a building. I can sell my stuff. People going to come and I could open the door and say, welcome to the shop, you know, to see that slow down through COVID was like an opening uh, for me to understand that, oh, damn, I'm moving forward, but people ain't coming. And that helped me grind more, helped me to invest in, in retail and, and research uh, how to have inventory and research how to be prepared and how yeah. to invest your money in your art for the long run. So these are lessons I learned without foot traffic. These are lessons I learned without uh, that consumer interaction. <laughs> These are lessons I learned through prayer and just faith and knowing that your vision can make a way for you and others. So this is 2020. I rolled this out for a whole year. Then it started to open back up. You learn different ways to, you know, go e-commerce, you know, do pop-ups, go outside and set up a table, meet people at the door, wear a mask, use hand sanitizer. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now I'm moving art differently, man. And to see, uh, uh, a business, small business survive through COVID. That was another mm -hmm. win. Even yeah. every everything that you even consider a loss is going to be a win anyway. Because in the day, I'm still creating. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, any setback, any anything that felt like it was too hard to do, that was a win because I could use that to fuel other things. And within that year, I was blessed to move into a program through Booth Black Organized and Operated Storefront Tendency and Downtown Partnership that brought businesses downtown. So now this brick and mortar. It shifted it now to a whole nother building where I'm able to come in here and create a whole different narrative to bring in other artists, other creatives, to create my own gallery shows for others, for friends, people I didn't even, I haven't even met before. And to bring it into a community that I grew up in as a kid going shopping for Easter clothes, a community not too many, not too many people are frequent because they think, oh, that's in the market, I know where the area is. But yeah. to bring a new light into that area through art and create a whole nother form of like just sharing, that's a win, bro. That's a win. 100%. And it's it's something that we're deserving of and something that we should have. And I, I can say firsthand, I was so excited, you know, when the brick and mortar opened down there in the Lexington market mm -hmm. earlier area, because I think I was there before you guys technically yeah. opened. I was just hanging out and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I ain't supposed yeah. to be here, am I? Like, I'm just, <laughs> I'm loitering right now. Like, I'm creatively loitering. <laughs> but it's it's just, you know, great to see and great to see what the next steps are going to be. And just, yeah. you know, I always salute and support anyone that's like trying to live their vision and doing right, you know, by mm -hmm. you know, like, you you know how it is. You, you, you see it when someone gets on. It's just like no acknowledgement of all of the people that have been around mm -hmm. and that have been supporting. And I haven't heard that from you. I've heard, I've heard you mention, you've mentioned some names that have like, no, these people helped me. This program was great. And yeah. you know, that's yeah. kind of what it is. There are some people who are mention like, yeah, you know, I got this all on my sweat equity. Nah, bro. We yeah, all see, work it, hard. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's bridges, man. So it, it's bridges that I, like I said, from 
18, 19, these are bridges that were built back then that you can yeah. cross over now. And that's what I'm saying. Like the network is so important because I used to be a butthole when it came to filmmaking. I thought I knew it all. So it's like you have to get checked sometimes. You have you have to realize you can't do everything by yourself and you don't know everything. So that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like the, the whole just creating that brand, the black, it, it, it taught me a lot, like humility and how to um, listen and how to be patient. You know, it taught me a lot of that. And these are lessons I'm getting from my own art. So I can imagine what the power it has for others. You know what I'm saying? So to so be in that situation and see how those networks from as a teenager can help you out as an adult, these are all important. Yeah, I, I hear you on that. And and I think, you know, doing this, and it's 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 as much I'm putting in a certain degree of work or what have you, but, you know, without having folks come on and be a part of it and, and things of that nature, it's just like you, you as you, as you mentioned, it's, it's, you can't be a butthole. It's like, I know all the <laughs> podcast stuff. I'm big daddy pod. You, you can't be on that. You, you gotta, big daddy pod. you gotta be in a spot where you're like, look, let's just have a conversation and make it yeah. as, as easy and as like thoughtful and as interesting as one could possibly do. And, you know, sometimes it goes down a weird path with the rapid fire questions, which we'll be getting mm. to in a moment. Or, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's just something that, you know, it's just like, you know, that didn't hit in this way. And maybe mm. we do it again. And because for me, it's, you know, showing the guests, showing their work and, you know, and helping them and facilitating with them in the storytelling uh, mechanism. Mm -hmm. But really that's that's kind of it, you know, and if yeah. I have a guest on, there are a few that I just have not put out. And, you know, guess it'll be a little weird. It's like, I know this, you know, like, I know mm -hmm. that this does not have you coming off sounding great. So let's, you know, go back and let's do it a little, a little bit different later or what have you. Yeah. Or let's circle back at a later time. And, you know, I'm sure <laughs> people get tight about it, but it's just like, do you want to come off sound like a butthole? Because that's yeah. the way you sound like an interview. And <laughs> that's, and it's, it's very rare, but there are sometimes I kind of get it early in, early, early on. And part of that is mm -hmm. sort of the collaboration. You know, yeah. you, you have that understanding. I'm like, all right, I mean, what do you got? And, you know, sometimes like folks don't even send me like a bio or something. So I'm like trying to piece mm -hmm. together a bio. And oh, yeah, yeah. oh, I don't even do that anymore. I do something different. It's like, all right, you, you should have just. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's why when you gave me the questions, like I said, oh, man, he gave me questions. So uh, because. I just find it like that naturalness coming even without the questions, you know, because mm -hmm. like I don't want to rehearse anything. Like what, what I want to say, I don't want to even know. I just want to like <laughs> have it happen. <laughs> it's part, part of part of this whole process. And I, I had a guest remind me of this. Uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's a podcaster, a journalist. Um, and he'd mentioned like, oh, this is all contrived. He's like, he's like, we're agreeing to meet at this time to do it this way. And you are going to send me the questions or I know you're yeah. going to ask me questions, but you know, and you can probably tell that there is a fair amount of deviation that goes away mm -hmm. from what's there. That's for me, you know, those questions yeah. are for me more than anyone else, because I would just start asking you about cartoons for an hour and I don't know if anyone <laughs> get anything out of that, you know? Right. So I, I guess this is, this is going to be the last real question. And uh -oh this is a means of kind of tying everything together. I think in, in terms of sort of your like overarching creativity, doing multiple things, whether it is like, you know, you, you have clothes there in a brick and mortar, you're, oh, you yeah. have a background in film, you have um, painting, you, you're doing all of these, these different things. You're curating events, you're creating experiences. Tell me about what that process okay. includes. Like if you're, <laughs> if you're, if you're going through it, right. What does that process yeah. look like from sort of the the introductory oh. step? Where does that first idea come from? Jeez, the process of all that it's, it's fun, bro. It's um, <laughs> hmm, it's music. Um, my process is music, man, and it's uh, it's this connection with people where I don't care what your background is, I'm gonna listen to what you got to say. <laughs> And I'm gonna respond to it the best way I can, and it's this connection with people that I like because I, I for a while, I wasn't the most talkative person. I wouldn't try being everybody's face. I still don't think I am now, but it's, it's the connection with people that I feel like it draws my art in a certain kind of way. Um, so my process involves um me being myself, 
very natural. Like the person that you see, I post on these pictures. Whatever. I won't be that same person that's off the internet that you see in person that's gonna have this this spirit that makes you be like, oh yeah, he's okay, he's an okay guy. So it, it's it's a connection that it's just it's just a realness there. It's my process. It's music. It's a certain kind of vibe of music I be playing. Um. In the process of doing all these fun things, see, think about it, I don't even realize I do all that stuff. I just, I just be doing it, man. I just create. So it falls in all these different lanes. And you ain't going to tell me I can do one thing. Because my one thing involves a whole, like a tree branches of just things, bro. So it's like when I meet a filmmaker, I say, oh, yeah, I don't, like you, you want to connect in some way. But know that if they're better than me at doing this or they have a better skill set, I love it. You know what I'm saying? It all works together. So it's about tying these pieces together. With my process is fast talking, a lot of adrenaline. Um, but I'm aware. You know what I'm saying? I could be all over the place. I like procrastination. Like I can be on top of everything. I'm gonna say one thing for the fourth quarter, just because I need it. Like I need that last minute thing to do to make things go not perfect. Mm-hmm go well <laughs> because, no, no i hear you i hear you yeah, there's... it's like it's something about preparation where it's a show a piece of art yeah. that if, if anybody know how i operate like i said it's fast paced it's, it's, it's organized confusion it's fast talking brian he's all over but I'm, like, I'm locked in in a room full of people i've already scanned the room i know how this is gonna work i know how it's gonna go and i will pull it all together and you will come and think how did he do all these different things like this because it's it's the energy, bro. It's a certain mm-hmm. energy that I put into my work and my process. That I don't know, man. It's fun, and, it, and, it, and it's a it can kind of brush off with other people. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's hands on. It, 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 it's oh, bro. It's, I it's a process. Yo, know, it's a process. It's a, it's like I'm painting everything. If you was to follow me around, it's like <laughs> <laughs> like a video game, bro. And everything is intentional. From the yeah. way I place a shirt to the way I put, if I put a dot on the wall, believe me, I put that on the wall for a reason. I've, and, I've been I've been in a spot trying to find sort of more of that intentionality, and <laughs> you know it because because I'm kind of just going, and at times, yeah. you know, like for instance, this morning I was sitting there and I just got struck with I, I like to call it the creative Holy Ghost, mm. and I was just like, "Yo, I got to write this down," mm. and then I have you. like four or five people that I really trust and I really respect their opinions, mm-hmm. I'll send them a text basically containing what yeah, the important. idea is. Here's that's, the that's, sauce. That's true. And yeah. they're like, oh, this is a great idea. When yeah. are you putting it out? Oh, and there's a lot of different ideas that I've floated out there mm-hmm. and having those people that you trust. And there are some other yeah. ideas that I may have floated out there and suddenly there are other people's ideas. So I'm very, but, you know, m- my belief is if something deserves to be out there, you know, mm-hmm. I don't really need to be the person attached to. I don't need the kudos, but yeah. also I need enough that I can keep putting out ideas. I I, I think mm-hmm. that's where I get caught on. Like I have this great idea. If mm-hmm. I don't get sort of that credit or acknowledgement from it, then I can't come up with the next great idea because mm-hmm. there's 7,000 sort of things in front of me. That's going to prevent yeah. me from getting the funding or the attention or whatever yeah. to put it out there. I think, I think it's recipes, bro. Speak more on that. Yeah, I'm saying I think it's it's re- it's a recipe for creatives. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I'll get a piece, a frame that I got months ago, and I know that it could be a year from now that that frame will be used for this whole like something <laughs> I'm cooking up months in advance. So yeah. I think it's creatives like it's things that are pieced together over years yeah. that can come together at the right time, and you be like, "Yep, I knew it." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it only has to be the same day, the same week. I've had things sitting around for years that I, I would pull out and put it with that recipe and make the best soup you ever tasted. Yeah. So that's a process right there. That's the thing that I run into and, and, and we'll wrap on this piece. That's the thing that mm-hmm. I run into when, um, you know, it's a production calendar, you know, mm-hmm. being, being intentional. If it's like we're recording this at the end of January as mm-hmm. you know, to date it for it to come out in February. And I'm already looking at booking interviews for April mm. for this month that's focused on like jazz and stuff like yeah. that. So I can't do it the day of. I have to like plan yeah. this out and have questions and book the guests and mm. all of that different stuff. Yeah. And sometimes people get it. And then other times yeah. it's like, yo, why can't we, you know, talk about this tomorrow? And then the next day we do the interview. Nah, I need I need time, bro. <laughs> yeah. And and fun thing about it is, I ain't gonna lie, I'm not the best planner. I'm the best. I'm a good executor, bro. I'm telling you right now, like what you're saying, 
Oh my God, he's planning. Oh no. <laughs> I'm definitely a planner. How, how I'm, I'm a strategist, man. I'm a strategist. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I respect that a lot. And that's I think the only I, way I can do this much. <laughs> yeah. And I think I do a lot just on randomness. And I think that's what I put into my art. Just random, like random ideas pop in my head. I create these random characters. And sometimes even creating programs or these these shows, yeah. it's it's randomness, bro. Sometimes it's, it's the not planning part. It's the sporadic piece that helps me pull us off. Because I challenge myself. They're like, can it's I take a, this really intuition sporadic there, Yes, it is there. Yeah, yeah. But you got to know how to handle it. Like, if you can't handle it, then it's going to be a rough road, bro. Because I've dealt with some artists that, they, they like, no, I've been here. I know what you're trying to do. If you can, everybody can't do it. Everybody can't do it. <laughs> this ain't so, for everybody, bro. <laughs> it ain't for everybody. That last minute stuff, I've been, bro, I have done a film. I did a film premiere. I was home edit, editing the film while the <laughs> audience was in the theater. You, you're bugging out there. That's Exactly. So if you have not been in that spot like that, then, woo. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's the thing, like, you know, uh, because like I'm doing more, I'm trying to do more things that are kind of outside of this normal, hey, mm -hmm. I talk, here's a screen, blah, 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 and not to diminish what I do, but trying to extend it sort of to let's do more live events, let's have experiences, let's do things mm -hmm. of that sort. And it's different things that come with it. So yeah, what, it's, it's like the things that are within the, the process of doing a story, like, let me simplify it to its mm -hmm. root and then add the complications to it. Otherwise, <laughs> it becomes like something that you can't wield and you can't control. And then yeah. you're less inclined to do it. And then all of those other things going back to the full circleness of it, yeah. you start comparing. Well, if this person could do it. Why can't I do it? It's like, you, but you're not doing mm -hmm. it. You're doing something different. Yeah. Whew. I just got busy with boxing. Like, it's like boxing. You got you got you to gotta go those rounds to know how to handle the next fight. I mean, I just I just do liver shots. I'm just I'm just aiming for like yeah, yeah. I'm trying to drop the person as quickly as possible <laughs> to move on to the next person. We're volume punching. That's just what this is. Yeah. So I I got some rapid fire questions for you. How now how does these work? I guess it's coming fast because it's rapid and it's firing. So something is shooting. All right. Hopefully not. We're in Baltimore. Um oh, but yeah. so so ultimately the way this is the way this is gonna work, don't overthink them. They're not, questions uh -huh. that that either I've thought about coming from maybe some of the research or questions that have come out of this sort of interview. So mm -hmm. I'm going to start off with this one. If you could, um, what would you do if you could only work for one hour a day? You could only work on your creative stuff one hour a day. Create every day. You only can work for one hour a day. What would be the thing that you do? Eat cereal. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, what is something that you regularly think about in the shower? <clears throat> what song is going to play next on, on, my, uh, on the radio? Um, are you a fan of cartoons? If so, what's your favorite one? Um, I am a fan. I'm a fan of, of, of eras of cartoons. I would say that the eighties, anything that I was going to school to and is in the time was on the bottom of the screen. Now I'm dating myself. So definitely, <laughs> so definitely early morning cartoons, the ones that got you ready to go to school. Same page. Uh, let's see. Um, you have the motto of create every day. What's something mm -hmm. else that you like to do every day creatively? Mm. Pray. I hear you. Uh, and lastly, uh, name an underappreciated black genius. Mm. Underappreciated black genius. Yeah, that was the one I added while we were talking, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to give you my... I mean, I'm surprised no one ever said Rob Lee is so, so just, just mm -mm -mm. <laughs> uh, my father. I love it. So with that, um, that's pretty much it for the podcast. So I want to thank you for, for coming on and, you know, making the time and, and chopping it up and indulging me. And uh, secondly, I want to invite and encourage you to tell the listeners where they can check you out. Black, you know, Black Genius Art Show, all of the good stuff. Where can they check you out? The floor is yours. Hey, hey everybody. This is where you can check me out at. I am in the city of Baltimore, so you'll probably see me around wearing some some character on my clothing of some sort. Or you can find me at 106 North Utah. That's downtown Baltimore, 106 North Utah in Baltimore, Maryland. That's where the Genius U Studios is. And you can also follow me on the websites, uh, www.theblackgeniusartshow on the Instagram and the Facebooks. And yeah, that's how you can find me. 
And there you have it, folks. I want to again thank Brian Robinson from Black Genius Art Show for coming on and chop it up, sharing a bit about his story. And I'm Rob Lee saying that there's art, culture, community in and around Baltimore. You've just got to look for it. Thank you.